with the most pressure of anything is playing a real life person. And we felt it deeply, particularly that they're both incredibly admirable women, you know, very inspiring women. And I think they also felt the responsibility of us representing the New York Times as an institution. Yeah. And so we had that sort of in our minds as well. Yeah. I think more than anything, we felt really honored to be part of telling this story and we felt a burden of responsibility towards all of the women who so bravely came forward in 2017 and after that. Yeah. And for me, so much of the film is about female heroism. And I think there's just not that many examples of that on screen, unless it's a sort of superhero film, which also has its place. But to see women doing, you know, really performing acts of heroism on screen in their everyday lives and their jobs and the way that they sort of are courageous enough to tell their stories, I think that's really inspiring. We had such an incredible time on this. You know, I think, I've been on, I've been fortunate enough and Carrie's been fortunate enough to have been directed by women before. I think it's the first time that I've ever been on a set where almost every department head was a woman. Our, the head of our studio is a woman. Our lead producer was a woman, Maria, yeah. DP. DP. So yeah. it felt very much like a whole set missionized to tell this story. Well, we've been friends for 14 years. We were on stage together on Broadway sharing a tiny dressing room 14 years ago. Zoe was a bridesmaid at my wedding. So I think the most difficult thing for us was trying to portray the part on screen where they weren't best friends yet, you know, because we are so close. And so there was, a, you know, the start of the film there, there's a bit more of a distance between them. And we, that was the bit that we were like, how do we portray this sort of people who don't know each other yet because we know each other in and out. Um, so to get to work together was just a dream come true. That just almost never happens. So we were very lucky. Jody and Megan are heroes, American heroes. They reveal the truth in a way that um, is liberating for so many people, uh, provides closure for so many people who have been harmed, and uh, I would say provides an example of what's, po what's possible when people are really committed to finding out what the truth is. Zoe and, um, and uh, Carrie are magnificent, um, very, very talented young actresses, and um, I was just uh, over overjoyed to be a part of it. You know, they taught me a lot, you know. I love Maria. Um, every now and then you get to work with a director who you just know for the rest of your life, if they ever call, you'll, you don't have to read it, you just will be there if you possibly can. And, um, Maria is one of those people. I used to work as a journalist before I became an actor and I was always interested in untold stories or underrepresented perspectives and I feel like abuse is still something that is still really misunderstood. and. To get into the complexity of it with such a phenomenal team, I think I hope will advance the conversation so that we can, yeah, really tackle and tackle and shine a light into the the darkness that has been able to be in be in, in 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 a systemic way with us for so long. I hope that people will be inspired to stand up and speak their truth, to really understand that how when we stand together we can achieve a lot of important change and just the resilience of Jodie and Megan as, as reporters, how important journalism of that sort is and that we really need it more, more than ever. I always said that I've always wanted to be a part of a superhero film and I first read this and I'm like this is this is a superhero film right here, like these two women and the job that they did at the New York Times to kind of bring this story to light, a story that so many people had tried and had been stopped and for them to power through um, it was just it's just a really remarkable inspiring story and it it created a ripple effect that really changed the world i really hope that the the audience that sees this film sees how hard it was to get this done and why movements matter so much you know why it's so important for all of us to use our voice to to make a difference in, in what we believe in and um, you know i i just think it's I think it's also a testament to the power of journalism, telling telling truths out there, and sort of what what something like that could actually result in. And th this movie is a real testament to that. This night is such a celebration for me, and I hope for all other survivors who get to see this film. I was lucky enough to get to participate and be an actress and play this incredible journalist from the New York Times called Emily Steele, who helped bring down Bill O'Reilly and. You know, my character gets to say some things in the film that I have said in real life, that I've wanted to say in real life about some of the people who were complicit in what Harvey was able to do. 
So being a part of this was so healing and so encouraging, and I'm just thrilled that the world finally gets to see what I saw a year ago being on that set. I loved Jodie and Megan's book. I thought it was so compelling and gripping, and I was not surprised that it was being turned into a film because it is, it really is like a thriller. It's like all the president's men, you know, but for this story. And I think that they're, I'm also a writer and a filmmaker, in addition to being an actor, and I always say that I think filmmaking is so important because it can really break people's walls down and reach their hearts and minds in a way that maybe reading a news article can't or hearing something from a friend can't. I think it will get under people's skin and they'll see that these are individual survivors that were really impacted in their real lives, not just this faceless monolith. And I think it's gonna be really impactful. Zoe Kazan was my scene partner in everything I got to do and I've been a fan of hers for forever. And she was, we met in the makeup chair and she found me, she said, I've been wanting to meet you. I'm so excited to work with you. And we really bonded and she was such a generous scene partner and it was, really lovely. I immediately felt at ease. And Patty Clarkson and Andre Brower, like these legends. And I got to make Andre Brower laugh on set by talking about musical theater. It just felt like a fairy tale. And it's been a rough five years. I have dealt with some career retaliation. So to walk on that set and have Maria Schrader welcome me with open arms and tell me she was a fan of my acting and excited to have me in this film, it was just finally that moment of validation that I get to be where I was always supposed to go. And the fact that it happened with this film is such a healing moment and it feels kind of like poetic justice. The message of this film I think is hope and courage and strength and as women have have found the bravery to speak up and to tell their story. It has encouraged other women to speak up and tell their story and there's incredible strength in numbers in doing that. And so I'm really proud to be a part of it. I'm really proud for people to see this and hopefully find some courage and strength in their own lives from this. Visual storytelling has been a medium that has changed what storytelling is. It's incredibly powerful. Um, because actors can bring amazing humanity to a role in a way that's different than than words, not that words don't, because words, this came from words, this came from um, a book that was written by two incredibly wonderful women, so it's just cool to be a part of it and to be one of the actors that gets to bring it to the screen. It was wonderful. I mean, it's my first movie, so to be a part of a movie of this scale with this many powerful women at the forefront, writing it, directing it, um, you know, lending their voices to it. I spoke with one of the actors today who plays older Rowena and the authenticity that both of us were able to bring to the role as actors while also honoring Rowena's story, the writer's words. It's an incredible collaboration of wonderful women and I'm just so honored to be a part of it. Very exciting and very monumental to be a part of, for sure. Bullies lose power once they have, when, once people know what they're doing and I think that it's important to speak up, say what's going on so that people know about it and that there's action that can be taken against it. I'm so glad that people now are talking more confident about what's happening, what's happening every day in the women's life actually. I feel that seeing something in, in the screen, it's m even more stronger as an impact. So I'm really happy that they did and that they keep the, the voice of many still very uh, powerful because that's what we need. We, s we need to keep talking about this, these things. Now in New York City, um, uh, it's passed a law called Adult Survivors Act and uh, this law is going to allow uh, victims outside the of limitation to reopen their case. So it's going to be starting from next month in November. And I really hope that whoever now feels more safe and more courageous to start and get their justice, they should be pursuing it. It's a very surreal experience. It's something we never could have predicted. We're still kind of, we're still trying to process it. But listen, we're so thrilled that the world is going to be seeing on the big screen so many of the incredibly brave sources that we encountered in this investigation. This film is like a real testament to the truth and the truth tellers. And you know, if this can inspire like other people to come forward and tell their truth, what, you know, that would be thrilling for us. A few weeks after the investigation, we wrote our book because we wanted to invite people on the journey. We wanted them to see journalism the way we see it, and we wanted yeah. them to understand that 
these women's deliberations were so complex, they took on so much risk, and yet a very small group of sources were able to have extraordinary impact. So, you know, our job when Megan and I are just sitting home at our desks or in the newsroom when we're not dressed up like this, our job is to help build people's confidence in telling the truth, and we would be thrilled if this film did that as well for people. We were so grateful for the care that they took in um, both in like ob observing us and bringing our characters to the screen and uh, this is the first time that some of our personal lives are going to be depicted and that was you know and on the one hand made us feel a little vulnerable but um, we were just blown away by the kind of care and integrity they they, they brought to you know they're playing us in the movie shortly before the story was published we were working around the clock to just nail down the facts and make sure we had an airtight story that we could publish and we actually shared a cab ride back to Brooklyn one night it was just like we had to leave the newsroom we were so exhausted and we were like leery-eyed like running on sort of chocolate covered almonds and takeout food and we turned to each other and asked like is anybody gonna care about this story and so to begin with, we were completely blown away to watch this help fuel this reckoning on sexual harassment and sexual assault. You know, the fact that there's now a movie uh, about this, um, you know, just feels like sort of the cherry on top. I mean, the, the sort of the reckoning that we've all experienced over the last five years was just more incredible than anything we could have ever imagined. So this is just feels like um, just, you know, an extra sort of special uh, moment for, for that. Well, it felt personal, I think, for for all of us. It's a story, you know, which is not just any story. We all lived through what happened after they published the story. It really felt like, you know, all of a sudden the windows went open and the doors went open and there's light in some kind of dark space and it ended the silence. And people call it a cultural shift. And, I mean, we all lived through that and in, you know I was involved in so many discussions over the years but to be able to tell the story how this story evolved is just you know it's so meaningful and and of course I was also I was so interested who are these people and how how did they get to write the story and what difficulties did they encounter and on one hand side it's really like an exciting thriller and on the one hand side it's also very much about the brave women who came forward to share their stories and uh, yeah these are probably the most emotional moments and I hope they're also empowering and inspiring for others. As a director your main task is to invite the right people in front of the camera, also behind the camera. And I'm just so grateful that they all accepted this invitation. I spent nights and nights and watched and, you know, talked to them via Zoom because it was still COVID. I'm specifically proud of our cast, yeah. I hope that people will, you know, be inspired to to start communicating. The most touching thing for me was, you know, this one line of one of the survivors who said, I always thought I was the only one. And that kind of isolated place, I think we have to, you know, the moment you share it, you can, you know, communicate and change at least the world around you. When I first received the audition for this film, it spoke to me immediately, um, and it was very secretive, but I, I knew, I just felt it in my heart immediately. Um, the character is an ex-assistant of Harvey Weinstein's, who uh, has been forced into silence for a very, very long time, for decades. and. Uh, when the New York Times reporter shows up on her doorstep, she is shocked, immediately processes what she needs to do, is very, very tempted to reveal the truth and ultimately uh, succumbs to her fear and is silenced again. So um, 
it just spoke to me very deeply that uh, that they're telling this story and there there, there was a great feeling of unity uh, on the film set. Uh, I felt it's rare that you feel such a connected connected feeling between everyone working on the film and um, and the subject matter. So I was really thrilled to be a part of it. I play an ex Miramax executive who helps Jody um, on her on her way to help finding clues and names and people um, so she could take down Harvey Weinstein. I came forward to Jody um, in 2017, almost five years ago exactly. Um, I was in the second article that was published and this, so everything that was happening in this film I was, was sort of happening in my life at that time and um, so it was very personal to me and as it is to so many people. Um, I feel like it's, it's hard to believe, but we really were in a place where we couldn't talk about this before. But five years ago, it wasn't happening. And it was, it was so, so brave with the very first women that came forward. That seemed like, it seemed like when three came forward, it seemed like so many had come forward. You know, none of us knew that hundreds would come forward. Um, but it's, it's a real full circle moment for me because, because, I, because Jody changed my life. I want them to see how hard these journalists worked to break the story and that it's, um, it's really imperative that we have investigative journalists because without it we will never be able to break down these systems that, that keep these abusers you know, from getting in trouble. And I think that also it's a time now where women are talking about it. We are, we are able to at least have a conversation where before it, it was a secret. It was a secret and now it's on the table. We have to keep talking about it, but the, the world has changed drastically and this movie really shows that. It was cathartic. It was really cathartic. I feel so connected to every single person. Um, and every victim and every survivor and also all the people that put this movie together I feel like did it with such care and reverence that it's um, it's more of it's a celebration it's a celebratory film we should always be talking about survivors we should be investing in survivors and what's happening with them and that's what this night is really about it's about the people who took a risk and did not know what was on the other side of that risk and they should be celebrated. We shouldn't be calling anybody else's name but the survivors. I hope that people realize how hard it is to tell a story like this. And at the, at the center of this story was really not about the one singular name that we keep hearing over and over again. It was about the courage of these women. And I think that we'll get to the time to sit down and really take that in over time and not in just quick sound bites like we, we've been doing for the last five years. So this is great. We've been doing this work a long, long time and not just me, it's just like, tons of us who have been trying to get this issue to the forefront. I think we've moved, probably jumped ahead 20 years in just five years, but we still have leaps and bounds to go. So I think we've done a lot, but this hashtag and this moment and this movement has made so much possible in the last five years. And I really want people to focus on the possibility and not all the other noise that's kind of drowning that out. It's a social justice issue. It's a public health crisis. It's not gossip. It's not fodder for us to talk about over, you know, the water cooler. It's the real people's lives that are impacted. So just like we talk about gun violence and climate change and police brutality, we should be talking about sexual violence.